sandblasted finish, not something you get very often on a good value watch because sandblasting is not a, uh, a cheap process by any means. Uh, you have to, it's an extra process you've got to do. But thinking about it more, it could be an easier process because you think if you've got to polish something, as hours of putting it on a polishing machine, brushing, you've got to put it on the brushing machine, sandblasting, you know what you do? You've got your, your unfinished case without any glass or anything in it and no seals or gaskets. You've got your, your finished machine case. You put it in a sandblasting booth and you just blast the hell out of it. So you've got the required finish. Then you clean it off with an air gun and then boom, you've got sandblasted finish. And the cool thing about it, even though it scratches so easily um, and you can't like buff it out, is it actually, I think it looks cooler with age. It looks more rustic and has a charm to it. It's different. And you just got to let it get a bit battered and bruised. It's very toolish as a finish. But is it going to be an appropriate finish for this watch today? I was unsure, but I was really excited about seeing it. And I've worn it for quite some time now. And got an, I've worn it at work and got a good feel for it. And I must say, I really like it. It's a really nice different finish. And it looks amazing, almost like titanium. So, and I can put it side by side with the titanium watch to see if you agree with me, but I really like it. I think it's a cracking little watch. So let's have a little look deeper into this watch, dive in and take a closer look. So I'll see you shortly. From my friends, and here it is. I'm going to be going through the video as follows. We'll start with the stats and the specs and watch what this watch is made of. Then I want to just move on to um, my likes and my dislikes and then my conclusion. Pretty straightforward. And that's how we're going to break it down. So without further ado, let's start with my good friend over here, Gipas. Mm, Gipas here is going to help us just, I can show you the weight. And that's because I've sized this down to my seven inch wrist, which is an average man's wrist. And that dictates that this 154 grams, what does that mean? If you've never seen my videos before, from my experience and many other people's experience, 150 grams is a really good sweet spot weight, just like the size of a watch and the thickness and all those kind of things. 150 is a good sweet spot because it doesn't feel too heavy and it doesn't feel too light, therefore cheap or flimsy or not too heavy and it feels like it's rattling around on your wrist too much. So 150 grams is Great, now let's move on to the dimensions. Now the case size, we'll start with that. So that is 40 mil. The thickness slash height is from to the center of the slightly domed sapphire crystals, 13 and a half. This goes from seven down to six and a half mil. This crown, so there's a slight tapered design on this, which is lovely. The lug to lug is um, the length of the watch. That is 48. And then the lug width for strap changes is 20. Or 19.5 but yes 20 then i'll screw that back in i'll put it on my wrist to show you how all of those dimensions correlate to looking on my wrist so you can get an idea of how it could look on yours if you go for one of these and let's go out of it as you see it's really good sweet spot it's so comfortable it's got the contouring lugs and even though it's got the solid mid link here that sticks out more. I'm going to actually measure you, show you that length and do a side profile because that can impact how it will wear on your wrist, but it doesn't make much of a difference in this watch. As you can see here, they do curve down quite a bit. Some watches, they can almost stick out dead straight and that makes the watch look really odd on your wrist. If I show you that measurement, so it's 53. So it gives you an indication of why this watch fits so well on the wrist. So we've got a butterfly clasp, yeah, so yeah, really good sweet spot. So now we've covered the weight, the dimensions, etc. I'm now going to work my way through all the materials just to give an idea there. And after we've covered the materials, etc., I'll be moving on to my likes and my dislikes. And that bit's going to be a bit more waffly because that's where I'm going to analyze and break down the design things I like and the comfort and, and versatility of this particular timepiece. So let's move now on to the materials now everything that you see here that looks like titanium i'm going to do a side by side shortly with the actual titanium watch just to give you an idea of how well this finish almost replicates that i don't think that was the intention but it's a very toolish finish to this stainless steel you can get a multitude of finishes with stainless steel as you know and it dramatically changes the look of a watch um, even though it's all made with the same material you've got brushing polishing 
bead blast and sand blast. This is sand blast. And it's effectively all the components uh, before anything else is put in, such as the crystal, the movement, and all the other bits and bobs effectively that could be damaged or contaminated with the sand. It's put, all the components are put in a booth, which is a sand blasting booth. And you, and they, they, you look them up, they're, they're really cool. Hang on, actually, I'll put a picture up here of one. This is pretty much what I think is um, uh, used to do this kind of work. But being more of an industrial scale, I think, with Felida when they make these watches. And you effectively blast the uh, finished case when it's been machined and then keep blasting it until you get this lovely smooth finish. That's what they've got with sand blasting. Now, bead blasting is different. That's effectively a similar idea. I think there's so many ways that you can finish metal. And I, I like that uh, they're doing that with this watch because it's different. I don't see many watches with this sand blasted finish. And I'll go into my dislikes part of why that is probably the case a little bit later on, but I digress a bit. Now, like I said, everything you see that's sand blasted is all stainless steel. Absolutely everything. The crystal, which is domed, is sapphire, sapphire crystal. The movement inside this watch is the Seiko NH35 with date complication, which you can't see because there's no date cut out in the dial. So we have loomed indices, loomed hands, loomed pip on the second hand, screw down crown, 100 meters water resistance. So it's got a great set of specs. Decent materials, decent movement, it's water resistant. And let's show you the loom so you can decide whether that's good enough for you or not. Now this is a shot of the loom without me charging it with anything other than my studio lights. Now I'll get my UV torch and we can give you an idea of what this is like when it's fully charged. Let's say it's on a bright day and it's been out in the sun, had a chance to really charge the loom up. Um, it's about 15 seconds with a UV light. Sorry if this is dazzling you on your screen, but this will give you a fair indication of how well applied the loom is. It's not just the brightness. I mean, that is obviously very important, but it's how well applied it is. So as you can see, it's gotten just enough on there for it to not look too mottled. When it's neatly applied, I'll show you a watch which has got neatly applied and decent loom. Often I go to this watch, my Citizen Dive Watch. This will give a really quick charge. Look at the loom on this. There's zero mottling or imperfections in it. Whereas you've got a cheaper applied loom. So less layers, I would say. Still a good grade of loom. It's just how much you put on of it. How many layers. When you look close, it's patchy. You can just see there at the nine. Just giving, uh, choose that one as an example. Look at the triangle at the nine. Even though it's green and it's quite bright, it looks slightly mottled, which means it's not thickly applied. So now I'm going to talk about this bracelet. It's got solid end links, which means it has a good, robust, solid feel of being attached really well to the watch. There's no rattle, no wobble, zero play. Yeah, there's no play. And we've got screw links. So what we've got, let me find them for you. Here we are. These links screw together. And I'm just going to show you how easy it is to adjust this bracelet. Yeah, nice little screwdriver. I think it's about a one mil screwdriver. Always get one of these for your collection. Just look up one mil watchmaker screwdriver and it's as easy as that. Now you just get it in there, unwind. So you've undone the screw, just get some little grips, pull that out, don't lose the pin and that's it. And then you do the same on another one and then you put it all back together again. Easy as that. Now the clasp is all butterfly and it works. You've got to do one side first, so this way, then this way, because that meets in there and clicks in for a super smooth finish. Double pushes. And it's almost like you have to do it twice to release it. So I'll show you. You've got there and then you got there. So you go like that, then you do it again. But the good news is, for anyone with a seven inch wrist, you are very likely to get an extremely comfortable fit. This literally is perfect for me, which is hit and miss with these kind of bracelets. Butterfly is always a bit of an issue, but 
luckily this fits but because of the colorway and design of the watch it's very easy to swap it out for different straps uh, to make it look better now let's talk about the dial a bit as well this has got a lovely grained effect on it a lovely brushed effect and it's just adds it again another textural difference another dimensional bit of interest other than something that's just matte black or deep black it's again another interesting textural finish to have i do like that brush finish and look how it catches the light really well really pretty but then the other unusual thing is look at the hands so you've got a little bit of shine on the watch that's helping so it's not just looking too bland by having everything all this sort of matte finish so it's really nice and then one extra bit of color apart from the blue to break it all up even more that lovely orange second hand i love that now that's just a lovely bit of color thrown in there that works really well with the dial color great idea so now i'm going to move on to discussing my likes and my dislikes or things i think that they could maybe work on so the likes are typical of what i have already discovered with felida watches and that is the fit and finish of this price i mean this price point it is alarmingly good R really is just over 70 pounds say 90 dollars give or take it does fluctuate a lot so keep an eye out but the the fit and finish and the materials the specification this watch should be should be a lot more money but that's the beauty of buying from where we know how to buy these watches and not worrying about brand names and things like that. You're buying something that is, this is really an, an amazing fit and finish for the, for the money. I mean, I've, you've seen my channel, you know, I've seen and, and, and reviewed an, a huge amount of watches from different brands, Pagani, Parnis, Cadison, Starking, now Felida. Um, the list, the list goes on and this is, absolutely outstanding really is i mean the only slight bit of issue i found was a little bit of slightly messy brushing marks or machining marks on the underside of these solid end links i think i barely find anything else you know there's some focus that will help no i mean it's really smooth all the screws that i had to take out came out perfectly fine there's absolutely no play in this bracelet there's no rattliness to it. There's no cheap feeling to it. But it's the only fit and finish thing I've noticed as well. Sometimes, ever so slightly, it's hard to thread that in. But see, it's easy then. Just unscrew it, screw it back. It's almost like it needs to be... There's a slight bit of wobble to it, as you can see there. So you've got to be careful as you're threading it in that's seating in correctly. But that's it. That's the only little issue I found, but it's, it's honestly, it's no big deal. There's no fluff under the dial, no scuffs or bits anywhere. Very good. And I love the design and, and that is not credit to Felida. They've effectively paid homage to a well-known watch design. I know some of you go, oh, why aren't you saying it? Don't need to. If you know it, you know it. You don't need me to say it. But it's paying homage to a uh, another design is the point I'm making. And that's another reason why these watches are so cheap because they haven't had to have the development costs into designing the watch they're effectively paying strong homage to a watch and then they're making their own the colorways with the finish the fact this is sandblasted and you've got a seiko movement it, they're, they're just making something their own and it's a, a very cost effective way of you getting a certain look on your wrist and that that is commendable if if you don't have thousands of pounds to spend on a swiss made equivalent so as you can hear the likes are very strong and i've said why i like that this bracelet fits me and i like that it is so comfortable on the wrist i like that the loom is good enough i like that the movement is reliable and accurate i like the design i like the materials that it's made of this isn't the perfect watch so what can i say that's going to knock it off its high horse a little bit well this finish is going to scratch extraordinarily easily. As you see, I've been very lucky. I've been very careful. I've not got any knocks and marks on it yet, but I know that this does scratch very easily from my past experience. 
and you can't get that out you can't polish it out or brush it out like you can with polished or brushed finishing but that is in a way if, if you like that kind of thing it's going to add to the tool look uh, a watch that looks like it's had a hard life or been battered about this bracelet especially as it's all this finish on the underside here this area because i've been wearing this on one of my nato straps that's why this bracelet looks brand new because I'm worried about just getting this looking so scruffy so quickly because this is the bit that gets all the abuse. And I, I don't know, the, as great as it looks now, I think in time it could start looking really rough. Um, which is probably why, like I said earlier, well, why aren't more watches sandblasted? That's probably why. But when, they look, when they're new, they look awesome. Like I said, it does look like a titanium watch. It is a titanium watch. Look at the finish. Very similar look to it, the sheen, the colour, but it's not. That's the thing. What what was the main purpose of this sandblasted finish? Was it just to be different for different sake? Was there a genuine reason behind it? I'm not quite so sure. Um, and my other dislike is very very minor, and that is just the name Felida. Uh, I know some people say, "Oh, I don't have a problem with it." I, I don't have an actual problem with the word. I just don't th want it on, on a watch, really. Um, that's why I often go for sterile dials if it works, because if, if you're not into brands, what's the point of having the brand name on the watch? You can support the brand just by buying their stuff. You don't have to have it plastered of everything. They're going to be happy taking your money if you have it. That's why they, <laughs> they have no logo versions of their watches, because they're like, well, you can either have our name on it or not. We really don't care. We just want your money. Um, and I'm feeling that this design works well with having the sterile version so yeah i've i've actually struggled to find huge amount of flaws i mean i'm being genuine here because i've like i've said discussed i'm worried about the consistency and durability of the finish sterile is probably over overdone i wouldn't mind some text on the bottom here maybe something on the this part here would have been nice so like sterile dial doesn't necessarily mean totally sterile watch i mean it'd be nice if you could get just the dial sterile and then you could just have a simple little p for felida there maybe or something on the middle there i know that adds expense to the watch but not much because all the other brands can do it i'm sure felida can do it sterile dial but everything else has got some nice branding to it or writing i, I would suggest that but other than that i am extremely happy with this watch and i really really recommend it i really do i'm not just saying that and um yeah, I, I can't find many other faults with it. Because I'm basing this on the fact that this is less than £100. And look what it can offer you for the money. So yeah, that's my final conclusion. For the money, we've got a new brand, Felida. They keep making watches which are real contenders for you spending your hard-earned money on something that gives you great value. And it's well made. And that's what we're looking for, isn't it, guys? So thanks for watching. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.